Hello, it's Fountain here and today we are going to talk about how to create change in your workplace. And I'm going to stick to this topic more in the uh, relation of interpersonal relationships. I'm not really going to be talking about bringing in new technology changes or hierarchical kind of structures. We're just going to keep it more interpersonal um, with this one. And obviously, good start and good thing to note is some places are going to be, you know, very flexible. Some are not. Some workplaces are, you know, really small. Some of them are large and they've just got multitudes of teams in them, right? So, you know, if even if you're in a really large um, organisation, you're still going to be working within a team. So it's best to just focus on that team if you can, um, you know, then obviously try to <laughs> create change with the whole organisation. It can just be a little bit overwhelming and there's nothing wrong with starting small and seeing how it goes there. Um, you know, and with the some people wanting to kind of be stuck that's okay you just kind of have to accept that sometimes but it's the same old saying if you want to see change you've got to be able to embody that yourself right and um, and it become when it comes to interpersonal relationships in your workplace um, you know you really do have to embody that and sort of reflect that back to them as well um, and Another plus side is it might mean that you actually get to bring more of yourself to your workplace, which may mean that you are more comfortable to be there, which may also mean makes you more productive. la di da da can go on and on and on from there. So, first one I want to mention is um, learn how to deal with differences. Differences can be all kinds of things, right? But learning how to deal with them, um, because as many of us know, when you're working with differences that actually helps amplify things like innovation and creativity. So sometimes, yes, things involve a little bit of work, whether that be internal or external, obviously, in something like learning how to deal with differences, but you can also start to see the flow on effects of how that obviously not just helps you, but also helps your whole team environment, especially um, if it's a space that needs more innovation and needs more creativity. Excuse me while that flies over. So, next one I want to talk about is resilience and flexibility. Now this one you're going to be a bit careful with because you don't want to go and take it too far because obviously you can lead into things like being walked all over and that's not necessarily very healthy. But as I'm sure some of you will remember, now that I've mentioned it, resilience, flexibility can be really handy in a lot of situations. Um, some people just really, you know, don't like it when they're having to work with someone that is not flexible, you know, who won't kind of accommodate a little bit to the way that they are. Um, and, you know, I, I do understand there's also some belief systems around, well, you know, if that person's too flexible, well, you know, they've got no centre point, they've got no um, structure in their, you know, no backbone or whatever. Um, so you do want to be careful with, with this one and obviously adapt it, how you use it with each person because you got to remember that everyone is coming into the workplace or, you know, showing up at the workplace um, with their own stories and their own beliefs and all of that sort of stuff. So, which I guess leads on to the next one because this one actually really helps you to get to know your colleagues better and then you're actually able to engage. Well, how do I need to engage with this person to make this relationship really flourish um, in the workplace? And that is asking for help and also being helpful. So I do know <laughs> that for some people, um, the workplace can be very stressful and asking for help is often um, somewhat almost of a traumatizing um, experience but you kind of just got to get over that and get through that and there might just be people that you just dare don't ever ask for help and if you do it's very few and far between but also what you can do obviously bearing in mind your own boundaries you don't want to be at work for an extra hour every day because you're doing this but also making yourself um, helpful to others as well because often when there's a um, issue or whatever it is that you're trying to work through and you're not quite sure how to approach it or they're not quite sure how to approach it you're going to have to communicate more with each other and then you start to build a more of a closeness and connection with them um, you know 
some people love feeling like they can help a lot of people and, and some people love you know asking for help and getting the help and, and you can embody both for those as well. So see where you can um, ask for help and see where you can be helpful. Um, obviously don't just ask for help because you just for the sake of it um, but you know if you do really need it find the right person that um, is good for in that situation. Obviously well I think it's obvious but not always everyone is obvious. Gosh, how many times do I need to say the word obvious? Practicing non-aggressive communication. <laughs> and there's a fine line with that, obviously. Gosh, how many times do I need to say that today? Where you don't want to be like super timid in your communication. But an example of you know non-aggressive communication is something like being observatory instead of judgmental um, when you're communicating with someone and there's particular ways obviously go about that with all these points you know if some of them don't you're like oh I don't really know how to do that or um am I doing that the right way then you know do your research experiment with it um you know there's going to be some obvious things that you won't do you know there's going to be a lot of boundaries that you like definitely don't cross but you can start experimenting with these little bits by little bits um, obviously welcome interaction you know when you've got the time to do so even if it means that you create an extra 10 minutes or maybe five minutes in the day where you sort of welcome a bit of interaction um, maybe you come in a little bit earlier and you have a chat with someone or you stay a little bit later or, or you have an interaction on your lunch break or when you've got spare five minutes um, I do understand that for introverts it's a little bit hard because um, I can be quite introverted myself sometimes um, but I find with my workplace there's very few of us so I'm able to be more of my own extroverted version of myself um, and not as introverted because of the environment that I'm that I'm in and that I've helped create and that was there also before I arrived as well it's just very helpful um, so yeah try and get out of the introvertedness just for a little bit even that's for five minutes um, a day you know, maybe you don't necessarily have to make a super big effort, but if someone interacts with you, maybe try and be a little bit more responsive. Maybe ask them um, some things and see if they want to open up themselves. Also, learning forgiveness. <laughs> that one definitely gets thrown around a lot of religious texts, a lot of spiritual texts, um, but there's a lot of um, use for it, right? So that's another great way to rebuild relationships with colleagues you know something may have happened in the past and it's really hard to let go of and you know I don't know but you if you can eventually try and work through it let it go when it needs to when you're ready for it um, but don't hold on to it forever and then you can try and rebuild that relationship um, with them and you know, and maybe their relationship might be a bit different. Maybe it might have changed a little bit, but at least you're um, making an effort to try and rebuild that relationship because especially if it's someone you have to work with every day, you don't really want to be going in to the workplace feeling like, oh, there's that person again. You know what I mean? You want it. Yeah. Our higher selves want us to, um, you know, be able to feel like we can communicate and interact with with people in our in our workplaces um, another main one i guess i should finish on is um knowing yourself <sighs> which is kind of obvious here we go again another word with that obvious <sighs> yes it makes sense right the more you know about yourself then the more you can ultimately um, become the change that you want to be and that you want to see and then that starts to emanate from yourself. Now obviously when you are um, implementing changes, you know, internally, externally, it can still take a period of time for that to come to fruition. Um, sometimes it doesn't and in that case you're just either going to have to change your situation by changing your changing your work changing teams changing roles going somewhere else or creating your own business you know so that can happen um, or you know 
you're embodying the changes or whatever and now it's time to move on to another level but you don't quite feel like you can get there with the current workspace that you're in and that's okay too but yeah, you do have to have a bit of a bit of patience and um, you really do have to actually embody these yourself and it could take a lot of time and there could be various reasons as to why it takes a particular period of time because there's certain lessons and seeds and things that that we come to realize at certain points you know times a bit funny right at certain points of our life and so sometimes things appear to be delayed because um, it's not time or sometimes we just can't see that it's happening so there's also that um, to remember I'm also curious to know um, if you have implemented some things um, within yourself and in your workplace and that have really worked and you've really started to see some changes in your workplace and I'm not sharing this video because you're like um, you know if you're unhappy or you are happy in your workplace like some people are really happy with where they are but maybe they want to move it to the next level or maybe people are really unhappy in their workspace and they really just want to be on the level <laughs> that, that they often are like you know when they're outside the workplace and that's okay too um, I'm sharing this also because I've gone through a number of different workplace changes myself um, the last number of years um, since moving to Australia and, and getting into a profession that at times can um, be quite toxic um, but that's okay like it's a choice that I have made to be part of that and um, through my own vision of wanting to create change and um, and how I want to create that change can show up in different ways obviously in the workplace but working with my clients and there's a lot of things that I can learn within that environment that I can then bring out into other areas of my life that don't necessarily relate directly to my work which has been really life-changing so yeah so through these life work changes that I've experienced I've you know I've tried things and they haven't worked so I've had to move on to other places and more often than not it's been the universe that's kind of pushed me out of that situation and then I've started back to square one and, okay where to next and just kept but I've been in this place now for over a year and I've been able to really create the environment that I really love um, I think a big factor in that is obviously the people that I work with also the fact that there's very few people um, in the workplace which really helps um, and also you know discovering also in good time that you know there's some similar values that I actually have with my work colleagues um, which really really helps and yeah, your intentions of what it is that you're doing and why you're doing that really, really makes a big difference. Um, because of the profession that I work in, it can be very easily t led um, to that place through things like status and money um, and intellectual kind of elitism um, and networking and whatnot, um, which is not they're not necessarily bad things. Um, it can be really easy to sort of get wrapped up in that um, but I'm even noticing like within the last sort of 12 months that the profession starting to change um, especially in regards to what is being written about online and then people are actually wanting to really step back from that because obviously people have had a really good opportunity to evaluate what um, they really want in their life at this point in time because that always changes but the core values always sort of stay the same and I guess just how it comes to, f to fruition in this physical reality can look a little bit different. I digress. Um, so, yeah, that, that has meant that there's been more of these kind of workplaces maybe similar to mine being created. Um, and I'm just really lucky. Well, not lucky, it's obviously meant to be, but I'm really glad that I um, have managed to sort of already be in a place like that. And, um, and because of the size of it, you know, like... I can really learn a lot about what makes it tick. You know, some people are happy to sort of really honing in just the one kind of skill or wanting to do one kind of thing. Absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Um, whereas I'm, like, since I was a teenager, I've always sort of thought, like, I really wanted to know how a whole organisation kind of operates. I can be quite detail-orientated, 
being the Virgo sun sign that I am, but I also really do like observing the whole picture as well. So I get to wear a lot of different kind of hats that um, maybe in a big organization they would have particular departments in, but in a um, small organization it's got a lot more fluidity in that. And now that I'm talking about this, and I've been talking about this for a wee bit in this video, I'm thinking maybe I should do a video on maybe going into more depth in another time. So yeah, that's enough. <laughs> and um, yeah, please leave your comments in the section down below, in the comment section down below. And check me out on the uh, different social media links that are in the description box down below. Uh, I'd love to hear your, your stories um, and your queries as well. So yeah, I'll see you in the next vlog.